In one of the recent examples, um, you've seen me introduce the concept of having um, more species in your reaction and um, including an inert species and really trying to show how the stoichiometric table um, approach uh, along with conversion can be useful for, for solving problems. And um, something that I, I might have uh, done relatively quickly uh, was go through the column for the um, molar uh, flow rates um, exiting the reactor. So I wanna spend a little bit more time uh, and really try to give you a trick here, um, a generalized uh, stoichiometric table um, that applies to all flow systems. And when I take a moment and think about at least what I saw um, last year, my first time teaching this course, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's a few types of mistakes that can get you in, in kinetics. Um, you know, one of them, hard to, to really help resolve um, our simple algebra, um, errors or errors with integration, sign, um, misuse of signs. <clears throat> we'll count those all as, as various kind of math errors. So um, I'm less concerned about those. There's, there's not as much I can do there. It's really on you to, to check your work. Um, but, but there are two kinds of conceptual uh, problems that um, I saw repeatedly among students, which probably has more to do with, with my teaching um, than, than them. Uh, so this year, I want to really try to emphasize um, these two problems. And so we'll have um, specific videos devoted to these. Uh, one of them is, is setting up your stoichiometric table correctly, um, which, you know, if you don't do that correctly, that's, that's near the beginning of the problem in the setup. So everything you do um, after that um, would be maybe not everything, but a lot could be erroneous. And you know, we have trouble giving you partial credit in those kind of situations because if everyone sets up a stoichiometric table differently and makes a different error, uh, you, first of all, that's that's kind of an, an, a major issue, right? It reflects that you misunderstood at least something fundamental about your, your problem. And we don't know or have the errors propagated for, for all of those situations. Um, so, so you can be, um, you know, disproportionately penalized for that kind of error. The other error um, or common mistake that I'll get to in a separate video is dealing with problems uh, where you have compressible fluids. So I just want to give you a heads up that those are coming. But for now, we'll, we'll focus on the stoichiometric table. Uh, so I think the, the Roberts textbook sort of rushes in, in I believe it's chapter four, um, to an example um, in a CSTR and then um, uh, that has multiple species and, and doesn't necessarily uh, go through in as much detail this kind of general approach. So this, I'm taking inspiration um, from another textbook, um, Fogler. Um, and, and so uh, that's just mentioned in case you have um, access to that book, but you really won't need it because um, this should be pretty comprehensive. So uh, imagine that you have a reaction where you've got um, your your general terms, you know, you could have uh, two reactants and two products. You don't necessarily need that. Um, and then you, this, we're also um, generalizing with stoichiometry here. So imagine um, that you have a little, a coefficient little a, and then little b, c, and d. And now we're, we've just, um, we've chosen a as our limiting reactant, our basis for this problem. And so we're dividing all the other stoichiometric coefficients by a. Okay, so this is a general scenario that can apply to a lot of situations. Um, that's, that's the goal here. And so now we can go about um, just kind of, of getting to a stoichiometric table. Um, so imagine coming in, you have molar flow rates of all of these species. Again, we want this to be as general as possible. So we've got molar flow rates A, B, C, initial molar flow rate of D. And let's also say that we have an inert species. Um, you could have more than one inert species, but this general approach, um, you know, just when you see what we, how we treat one inert species, uh, you'll see how to essentially treat potentially many. Okay, and let's say then, uh, well, first that they're, they're all coming into this reactor volume. Again, this is a flow system. Um, so we have a reaction happening here just within the system boundaries. And then coming out, we have um, molar flow rate of A, B, C, D, and I. Okay, so this is our 
initial, um, uh, not our initial, but this is just our diagram that's depicting all of the variables in play. And one of the other things that I, I just want to define here, a term or symbol that will be useful for us in this stoichiometric table, um, is I want to, just like we have um, used the law of definite proportions um, to sort of normalize these stoichiometric coefficients around our basis of A, let's do that with molar flow rates too, um, especially in the initial case. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, define um, a, uh, we'll, we'll call it theta, theta i, and I'm just going to say that that's f i naught, so the molar flow rate of a species i, um, with respect to f a naught. Um, so this is a this is just a term that's going to help make the um, the stoichiometric table a little bit more concise um, uh, in in terms of space. And one other thing that I wanted to show you here. Um, so that you know how you can interconvert between other variables you might be given, is this, as we discussed before, um, your molar flow rate is also equal to your concentration times your volumetric flow rate. And what you can see here is that um, whether it's species I or species A, um, they both are multiplied by the volumetric flow rate to get these molar flow rates. So those can cancel out. Um, so this also simplifies to a concentration of species I coming in and a concentration of, of species A initially. And um, it also works with, uh, we haven't spent much time on this yet, but this might be more useful thinking about gases, especially a mole fraction. Oh, I picked B arbitrarily here. This should just be I still, but uh, obviously B is one of the species that you can substitute here. Um, over your initial mole fraction of A. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna use this term um, in our stoichiometric table, and uh, this is this is our setup. So let's go ahead and look at our stoichiometric table. So we have um, we're gonna have three four columns this time. We're, we'll have the usual, um, which are our species, our molar feed rate. Um, and then our molar effluent rate. This time I'm also going to include a column uh, for the change in reactor. Um, this will help, um, again, the purpose of this exercise is to kind of slow down and give you um, a, a generalized breakdown of what's happening when we're making our stoichiometric table. And I think the addition of this column, at least here for the purpose of this exercise, um, helps show how we go from molar feed rate to molar effluent rate. This is not a column that you necessarily need to include in your stoichiometric table. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and start off. If we're dealing with species A, that's our basis. We have a molar flow rate of A coming in. Let's go ahead and work down this column. Um, so we can say that we have molar flow rate of B initially, um, but we, I want to also introduce this symbol. Again, so we can have theta B here times F A naught. So why might that be convenient? Well, you know, now you see things in terms of, of F A naught, um, which may or may not be helpful, but it might, it might allow us to do some simplifications here on the, the right-hand side. So that's what I'm gearing up for. Um, okay, and so we can do the same thing for species C. And of course, by definition, same thing for species D, theta D, F A naught. All right, what about our species I? Well, we have F I naught. And uh, just based on the purposes of our definition, um, we can still set it, uh, we can still use this, this ratio, even though it's an inert species, this is still true. And um, this gives us a total molar flow rate that we have coming in. And this is going to be a really important term to think about. And a lot of the stoichiometric table really um, for these, these problems later of variable density fluids. Um, OK, so now we're going we're gonna to examine this column, which we, we don't spend time on or haven't before. Uh, so let's think about what's happening in our reactor. 
we're going to use conversion. That's a good way to, um, you know, um, keep track of every uh, all of these different um, uh, reaction progress and and uh, all the different terms in a species independent way. So if we remember um, or just think conceptually, um, you know, in our reactor, what's happening is that um, the conversion. Just think about um, a situation where you have 90% conversion, right? I'm going to use a hypothetical. I, I always like to use these kind of round numbers to help me think of what's going on. If I start of species A per second coming into the, to the reactor and I have 90% conversion, then my change in the reactor should be minus 90 moles per second, right? Kind of intuitively, I know that, well, my change is going to be negative. It's going to be related to how much I started with. And it's just the product of that times conversion. Um, so again, uh, if my conversion were, were um, 0.9, when I multiply 0.9 times 100, I get uh, 90. And I get a negative 90 to reflect the fact that I'm, I've um, uh, consumed 90 moles per second. And, and so, um, you know, you don't have to do that kind of assumptions or, or anything like that, but that can help you understand why this term has this sign and, and this structure. Um, okay. Now, if I think about it for my other variables, I can use the law of definite proportions. My, um, and I can also think about some, some practical aspects. B is another reactant. And its stoichiometry related to A is this B over A. And um, that is just going to be multiplied by what we had before. And so now you'll see a pattern. And again, um, some of the kind of errors that students have made before common one is, is getting this wrong, um, either the sign or more likely um, the ratio here. Okay, I'll just keep going down this column. C is a product. And again, the amounts that are made, the changes in the reaction are, are directly related to how much A we start with coming into the reactor and its conversion. Uh, okay, what is the change of um, in the reactor for species I? Well, we know there isn't a change. Uh, so I'll just leave that. That's not a negative sign. That's a, a sort of a blank. Okay. Now let's go ahead and, and structure these molar effluent rates. Um, so our what we have coming out is simply what we had coming in plus our change in the reactor. And that's why I wanted to include this column so that you can see the progression with as few steps skipped as possible and with everything generalized. Um, okay, so uh, our, our rate is FA, but if we're trying to, to rewrite that in terms of, of things that we started with, that is FA naught times one minus the conversion. And you see that because if you take FA naught and add this negative FA naught times conversion, then you can pull out the FA naught and you get exactly this expression. Okay, so let's look at FB. FB, if we again um, just take these two terms, um, we get FA naught. We can pull that out because it's on both. And this is where that little um, theta definition comes in handy. So we have theta B minus b over a times conversion. Uh, thinking again about those kind of errors, they, they usually happen here. Um, so you won't get that uh, if you follow this approach. Um, OK, fc, same deal here. Uh, of course, this is a plus c over a. And fd equals FA naught times theta D um, plus D over A times conversion. And then, um, well, our, our FI, our molar flow rate of I uh, hasn't changed. So it's still this expression, okay. Uh, let's go ahead and try to write then the sum of what this would be. I'm, I'm starting over here, but this is still part of 
this column. Uh, okay, so Ft. Our total molar flow rate exiting the reactor is going to be our initial Ft naught. And we can we can get this by the way. Um, we know what Ft naught is. So if we were just to try to sum up all these terms, um, and, and we can basically sum up all these terms, and then we can compare the two, and that's just what this expression is going to be. Um, so this is going to be Ft naught plus, now if I sort of work my way back up, I would get the following. D over A plus C over A minus B over A minus one. And hopefully I don't run out of room here. This is times FA naught times conversion. Sorry that that became cramped, but just to reiterate, this is um, all in parentheses, D over A plus C over A minus B over A minus one times FA naught times conversion. Um, and this stoichiometric table, ladies and gentlemen, is always true. Um, so, it, you know, you can, you want to be able to think about, um, and, and later sort of into it, um, you know, in a normal class, uh, for example, if you didn't have, um, open book. Well, you know, actually, uh, at least when we, when you normally teach the class in person, you're still allowed a, a sort of summary cheat sheet. And this is uh, the kind of thing that could be really useful to have. Um, you know, you, you don't want to just mechanically plug and chug. You really want to understand why this has this form. But if you go about this approach, you're very unlikely to make what could be a costly error um, in how you think about your stoichiometric table. So hopefully that is helpful. Um, and, you know, I, I'm trying this out, this part relatively new, if you have any comments about this, um, maybe there'll be a discussion board or, you know, you can email me or something about that. All right, thanks.